Hello everyone and welcome to episode 20 of the Adult Game Maker course. In this episode we're diving into a very requested topic and that is showing dynamic building production information in a building's description. Let's get into it. Now before we begin coding, I first want to explain the process of actually doing this. It's actually pretty simple so don't worry. So first things first, each one of our buildings needs to produce a resource which is unique to that building, is hidden to the player and cannot be spent in any way. Keep in mind that the building needs to produce the exact same amount of that unique resource as the main resource that it's producing. This resource then acts as a counter for how much a building has produced over its lifetime, but we can read out a lot of other information from this single resource, such as how many resources a building is collectively producing per second, how many resources a single building is producing per second, and plenty more as well. We can then embed all of this information, or data if you will, in a building's description using text embeds. And that's really all there is to it, and don't worry if you don't quite understand the full process yet, I will show it to you as we implement it to our game. So let's begin. Okay, so I'm in Notepad++ now and the first thing we need to do is to create a new resource which is unique to one of our buildings. I'm gonna begin with metal detectors. So let's name this resource metal detector total, right? It's basically a counter for how much metal detectors have produced over their lifetime. And this resource doesn't need a name or a description, it only needs to always be hidden, right? Now that we created our resource, let's scroll up to our metal detectors and have them produce the same amount of that resource as we are producing coins, right? So basically just copy and paste this on tick effect we have here, but instead of it producing coins, let's have it produce that metal detector's total resource. So metal detector total. All right, now that we did this, we have a counter for how many coins metal detectors have produced over their lifetime. And from this, we can read out how much a single metal detector is producing per second using the metal detector total PS selector. So basically, we're already halfway done. We just need to embed the information inside the description. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this piece of text I have here and then change it accordingly. So I want this to say stats instead of effects. And here I'm going to write one metal detector produces we're going to use an embed here so one metal detector produces metal detector total ps coins per second but we need to divide this metal detector ps by the amount of metal detectors that we have so like this and this is great because in our description we now have an embed telling us how much a single metal detector is producing per second and keep in mind that this will also scale with any upgrades that you throw at you know, your building, in my case metal detectors, because anything that increases the, its yield of coins will increase its yield of this metal detector total resource as well, which is pretty neat. Now the reason why we had to divide the metal detector total production speed per second by the amount of metal detectors is pretty simple. The kind of number that this selector actually represents is just the rate of increase of the metal detector total resource per second. So for example, if we own six metal detectors, we would be producing 6 of the metal detector total resource per second. So, if we divide the metal detector total PS by the amount of metal detectors that we own, we are gonna get how many coins a single metal detector is producing. Hopefully that makes sense and now let's continue. So if we now test this in our game, we can see that, for example, let's say we have 10 metal detectors, we can see that it says one metal detector produces 1 coins per second, right? And when we buy an upgrade for this building, we can now see that it says one metal detector produces two coins per second. So it works as we wanted it to. Let's now continue. All right, now I want to add two more statistic counters inside of my description. First one being how many coins metal detectors are producing as a whole. And the second one being how many coins they have produced so far. So first, let's implement the first feature. So let's just have the description say you have this, right? So like this many metal detectors. Let's just capitalize the letters, reducing, and now all we need to do is just use the metal detector total PS selector, coins per second. And I also want to make that bold, so let's just do that real quick. Okay, and now just one last thing, a counter for how many coins metal detectors have produced over their entire lifetime. So, let's just have it be metal detector total points produced so far and let's also make this bold so it's prettier 
Okay, and now if we test our changes inside of our game, let's for example buy 10 metal detectors, we can see that our stats say that one metal detector produces one coin per second. It says that we have 10 metal detectors producing 10 coins per second, which is correct. And it also tells us how much coins our metal detectors have produced so far. And when we buy an upgrade, it should work like we expect it to as well. So now it says that it produces two coins per second and that we have 10 metal detectors producing 20 coins per second. All right, and this is great. We now have fully functional information inside of our metal detectors description. Now all that's left for us to do is to repeat this exact same process for every single one of our buildings. So I'll just do that off camera and I'll leave the code for you in the description. All right, and there we go. I fully implemented the feature to all of our buildings and tidied some of the descriptions a little bit. And as you can see, it's very accurate and even works with the complex boosts that we have in some of the buildings. For example, on our coin trees, when our parity passive effect is turned on, we can see that the stats update accurately as well. Right now, our boost status is on and when we don't own an even amount of coin trees, you can see that the stats have updated accordingly. When once again we buy another coin tree and our amount of coin trees is now even, it once again updates accurately. And the same goes for coin conglomerates. We can see that right now the triangular link boost is turned on, but once we don't own an amount of coin conglomerates that is a multiple of 3, it updates the stats accurately as well. So now that we own only 10, we can see that it updated to say one coin conglomerate produces only 400 coins per second and if we once again get it to for example 12 our statistics section has updated as well and now it says one coin conglomerate produces 1,592 coins per second. Now, one of the key disadvantages of this system is actually that it's never gonna be 100% fully accurate because idle game maker rounds down embed values. However, it's pretty close to being fully accurate nonetheless. This just means that, for example, it says here that a single coin tree is producing around 52 coins per second, but it actually is producing a little more than that. So maybe somewhere around, you know, 52.5 or so. And this means that the higher the values, the less impact this inaccuracy will have but if you have really small numbers in your game and you desperately need to show decimal places in descriptions there actually is a way to do that but it's more complicated and would require a tutorial of its own so if there's interest for that i might make a tutorial on that in the future another nitpicky kind of problem with this is that once you buy a building the stats become inaccurate for a split second before recalibrating themselves so for example if we were to buy you know a lot of coin conglomerates at the same time you can see that the stats are going pretty crazy however eventually they settle down at the correct value and this is unfortunately just an annoying limitation with added game maker because values in the engine cannot update every single frame and unfortunately we cannot do much about this issue but with that said i fully believe the functional parts of this system far outweigh the small disadvantages all right and that should be the end of this episode hopefully you found this tutorial useful don't forget to like comment and subscribe and if you really enjoy what i do here feel free to check out my patreon which is linked in the description for only two dollars a month you can get some pretty nice perks so make sure to check it out so thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one